Hello and welcome back to Niche Tea, where we talk about drama happening in communities you may not be a part of. Last time we talked about the beauty community, specifically the brand Euphoria, coming out with a pure, unfiltered black foundation, which is a choice. Today we're going back over to the gaming space and specifically we're talking about a situation where the voice of the people actually made a difference so I really wanted to cover it. We're talking about Helldivers 2. Helldivers 2 is a PlayStation game which was released in February of this year. It's what's called a cooperative third-person shooter. Cooperative meaning there is no PvP in the game. You meet up with other people online and create squads and play against the game itself. And third person simply refers to the point of view that the camera takes throughout the game. So a first-person shooter is where the point of view is from the eyes of the person shooting. So those are the ones where you see the gun like in front of you hovering as you run around. Whereas with a third person shooter, you're basically Lakitu from the Mario games following your guy around. And so you're looking at him, but still controlling him. Now, generally as a rule, I don't feel like I hear that much about cooperative games compared to PVP games. Because as you might expect, when you have people playing against each other, that's where a lot of the toxicity comes from. But these games aren't like that. And on top of that, by all accounts, this game is really, really good. And yet in the three months that this this game has been out. There have already been multiple like major kerfuffles within the community that people have been tagging me in and I've been tracking. Some of my favorites being that when some people complained about some of the updates that were made to the game on Reddit, the devs came into the Reddit and told them it was a skill issue. And there was a whole fight on Twitter as to whether or not the game is satirical when it is quite literally just a video game adaptation of Starship Troopers. Like you play as humans from a future super earth that is ruled by a managed democracy where no one actually votes and if you want to vote that is considered treasonous like even just asking for there to be voting is considered treasonous and you're fighting a bunch of enemy races as part of this like great war for earth but there are even apparently missions where you're supposed to stop treasonous transmissions from going through and then at least some of them are about the fact that it's not a real war and it's made up by the government and it's just an excuse for them to go and pillage all the resources from these planets where these other races probably already live no no no, no. you're playing the good guys of course so I'll just say there's just been a lot going on with it, even in just the short time since it's come out. But the response to this made all of that look like nothing in comparison. So what happened? As I mentioned before, Helldivers 2 is a Sony game, so it's able to be played on the PlayStation or on your PC through Steam. Because this is a game where you connect with others online to play together, if you're playing on a PS5, you need what's called a PlayStation Network or PSN account. This is a little annoying, but for people who play on console primarily, this is something they're very much used to and very likely probably already have. Sony has been pushing it for a very long time and it is free to make. However, and my understanding is this is generally true, you do not need a PSN account to play Sony PlayStation games on PC. You can either connect with your friends directly or you can connect with random other players through Steam, which is the platform that the game is sold through. Well, last week, Sony came out and said, hey girlies, I know that we said before that you didn't need to have a PSN account to play on PC, but you know it'd be so fun, we were just talking about it. What if you did though? And they announced that within days, they were going to be requiring any new accounts that play on PC who want to start playing the game have to have a PSN account and any old accounts would have to be migrated over to ones with PSN account like you'd have to add a PSN to it by the end of this month. Sony went on to say that this was always the plan and the only reason this wasn't a requirement at launch was because of technical issues that they were facing on their side and they had to let it go and they referred to this new change as the expiration of that grace period. This did not go over well. To say that people were upset would be like saying hereditary was a little dark. And if you're looking at this purely from the outside, your initial instinct is to roll your eyes a bit. Like, oh, you have to make an extra account that's free and then link them and then you can keep playing just like you always did. Oh, I'm sorry, but that's not it. Yes, it's annoying and it's purely self-serving for Sony. So it's like, mm. but it goes beyond that. There are two primary issues, the smaller of which being that the PlayStation Network does not have great security. Sony as an organization has had their data breached and leaked a number of different times in different ways over the last number of years. But to be fair to them, the last major breach of the PlayStation Network specifically was in 2011, so it has been a minute. But in order to open a PSN account, you do need to give them your full name, address, and date of birth. And that's not information people want to just be throwing around these days. But the significantly bigger issue is that Helldivers 2 was rolled out globally and has a very active global user base and there are roughly 170 countries that cannot get a PlayStation Network account at all. And on top of that, there are countries that even though Sony says, yes, you can have a PSN account if you live here, the laws of those countries prevent 
their citizens from making a PSN account. For example, Russia and China. So anyone who played in any of the countries on this list, Russia, China, and anywhere else that might restrict them from having a PSN account can no longer play this game, a game that they paid for. Now on the Helldiver side, there are three main players in this. There's Arrowhead, which is the actual developer, the company that made the game. There's Sony, they're the publisher of the game. So it's a Sony game made by Arrowhead. And then we have Steam, who which is a publisher platform for PC specifically. Like I said before, if you're playing on PC, you buy it on Steam. So because the PC players bought it through Steam, Steam's response to this announcement from Sony was to say, we're ignoring our standard return policy for video games, where if normally if you buy a game through Steam, you can only have played it a certain number of hours and then still return it. Like you can't play it consecutively for three weeks and then return it after the fact. You have to have it under a certain number of hours, meaning like you knew you didn't like it and then return it. And they completely disregarded that. They're like, look, if you want to return Helldivers, do it. In terms of social conversation, people were pretty evenly directing their ire at both Sony and Arrowhead, trying to understand like, how did we get to this? The Arrowhead CEO was pretty well engaged on Twitter, discussing with fans what was going on and what their position was. And he did confirm what Sony said in their official statement that this was always the plan. The game was set to release on PC with the PSN account requirement. It just exploded is the term I keep hearing. It wasn't working for one reason or another and they had to disable it. Otherwise it would have very detrimentally affected the game itself. He went on to claim that it has always been listed as a requirement on the Steam page. It just hasn't been a thing that they've been enforcing. Though I've seen people take screenshots that show that that may not actually be the case. So I'm not totally sure there. He was then asked why if this was always the plan, did you sell this in countries where you knew they couldn't get a PSN account? And that, as he responded, is very solely on Sony. They're the ones who decide as the publisher where it gets published to. He also indicated there was still ongoing conversation both within Arrowhead and with Sony as a result of this backlash. And Discord screenshots started to circulate of alleged Arrowhead devs specifically coming out in support of the players. One of those screenshots was of a community manager at Arrowhead named Spitz. In it, he says, if players want any real chance of having Sony change their minds on this, they have to be mass refunding the game and review bombing it in Steam. And review bomb it, they did. Players went on what I would call one of the biggest review bomb campaigns of all time. Truly insane and clearly heartbreaking to the Arrowhead team. Reminder, this had a hugely positive review rating before. And initially it seemed like the players weren't gonna get anywhere anyway, because on Monday, Sony came out and restricted the game from being bought in any of those countries that couldn't get a PSN account. But this may have been part of the plan that they already had in place, which was supposed to officially go live as of the 6th anyway, because quite literally later in that same day, after 200,000 negative reviews on Steam, Sony threw their hands up. He said, we heard you. Thank you for your feedback as you were. Well done. And while things like review bombing are obviously not ideal, it puts Arrowhead in the middle. They're the ones getting hit the hardest when really they didn't do anything wrong. Consumers these days are really limited in what their options are when it comes to making a huge corporation like Sony listen to them. So I'm happy that we got to that point where they were able to enact change. And I do have to say, it was actually really heartwarming to see the messages of support of the community within itself. This was not a bunch of people going at the computer. This was people saying, we are one, we are together. These are my friends and I'm playing with them or I'm not playing at all. It was actually really cute. I liked it a lot. It was a good sentiment. Actually look up on TikTok. Somebody made an edit of the end of Infinity War, but like made it for Helldivers 2. Look it up, it's absolutely devastating. These people care about each other. Now everyone's happy, obviously, but twist, that Arrowhead community manager I mentioned earlier, the one who encouraged the review bombing, has been let go from Arrowhead, allegedly as a direct result of encouraging the review bombing, which of course people are not happy about, even though he himself is basically like, yeah, I had a feeling this would probably happen, but worth it. King shit, honestly. I don't know if anything specific is gonna happen there. It's a hard sell to get his job back after that. But this is a good point to say, if you were one of those people who review bombed, now that you got what you wanted, you have to go back and change the review back. It's like with kids, you have to reward good behavior. Otherwise they won't do what you want next time you do it. I'm joking, but like, I'm also serious. It won't work again otherwise.